transposons in plant developmental biology. This morning glory is different than every other morning glory in the world. In most flowers, there are genes that dictate the pattern of colors. However, there is something called a transposon in the middle of the color gene of this flower. Due to a mutation, the transposon actually moved in the genome, allowing the color gene in the flower to be repaired. This color gene, now repaired, makes the colored sector you can see. Now let's take a closer look and see how a transposon can actually move around in the genome and lead to these changes. The red pigment producing anthocyanin synthase gene is interrupted by a transposon. Transposase enzymes cut the transposon out of the anthocyanidin synthase gene. The transposases now catalyze the insertion of a transposon into a new site in the genomic DNA. The plant often repairs the site from which the transposon was excised, allowing a gene to become functional again. Sometimes, the reinsertion of the transposon disrupts a different gene, which can lead to a different phenotype than what was originally observed. Now let's see what happens to this newly repaired anthocyanidin synthase gene. Now an RNA polymerase enzyme can come along and synthesize anthocyanidin synthase mRNA. mRNA is the step between genes and proteins. Now a ribosome can translate the mRNA message and produce a protein, in this case the enzyme anthocyanidin synthase. An enzyme is something that helps, or catalyzes, the conversion of one chemical into another. The anthocyanidin synthase, false colored pink, is just one of many steps in an enzymatic pathway which will produce the final colored compound seen in the morning glory. The chalcone synthase enzyme, false colored yellow, converts two precursors into the first intermediate. Chalcone isomerase then acts, followed by flavonone 1-hydroxylase, followed by dihydroflavonol reductase. A reddish compound is then produced by anthocyanidin synthase. This compound can be further modified to result in the red seen in the flower. Since this genetic rearrangement of a transposon happens in just one cell, and since all of its daughter cells will have the same DNA, it is possible to figure out how many daughter cells came from a single cell. This animation shows what happens when a cell becomes red in a tissue that's growing in only one direction. That would be height-wise. In the final tissue, there is a red stripe showing that the cells were dividing in only one direction. Now what would happen if this tissue were growing in two directions? That would be lengthwise and heightwise. This animation will show that you would expect a round or square pattern rather than a stripe in the final tissue. Transposon excision events and the sectors they create allow for a scientist to determine a tissue's growth pattern without having observed the tissue while it was growing. How would cells have needed to divide to create this pattern? As you can see from this animation, a spiral division of cells allows for a creation of that pattern. In this time lapse of a dahlia petal, you can actually see the sectors created by a transposon excision event and how they change over time. The red sectors elongate as the petal grows, ending as stripes. So we have seen that transposons and the sectors they create can be very helpful in determining the developmental past of a plant. However, this is just one of the many uses of transposons. It can be used in mutagenesis, and it can also be used to identify and sequence novel genes in a pathway. These topics will be covered in an upcoming video.